Hi, and welcome to this Corp Maths video on tree diagrams. In this video, we're going to look at what tree diagrams are and then answer some typical questions on them. So tree diagrams are very useful to represent what can happen whenever two or more events take place. They show all the possible outcomes and therefore are really useful whenever we answer probability questions. So let's have a look at our first question. So the question says, John throws a ball at a target. So there's a target and John throws a ball at it. Dan then throws a ball at the same target, and the probability that John hits the target is 0.6, and the probability that Dan hits the target is 0.7. And we've been asked to complete the tree diagram. So this is our tree diagram, and as you can see, it's got our two events, John throwing the ball at the target, and then after that, Dan throwing the ball at the target. Now let's have a look at our probabilities. So here we've got a pair of branches, and these branches represent John throwing the ball at the target. He can hit the target, or he can miss the target. And if the probability of John hitting the target is 0.6, that means the probability of him missing the target would be 0.4. And as you'll find with these pair of branches, they will always have to add together to give you 1. So if we've got hit is 0.6, miss will be 0.4. Now we've got two pairs of branches for Dan, because obviously it depends what happens with John's throw. Because if John hits, then Dan would throw the ball at the target. Or if John missed, then Dan would throw the ball at the target. So that's why we've got two pairs of branches for Dan. And the probabilities, well, if the probability of Dan hitting the target is 0.7, the probability that he will miss the target is 0.3, because they have to add together to give you 1. And for the next pair of branches, the probabilities will be the same. So we've got 0.7, and we've got 0.3. So we've labelled the probabilities on the tree diagram. Now let's have a look and see what other information the tree diagram tells us. So first of all, it tells us all the possible outcomes. John could hit the target, and then Dan could hit the target. Or John could hit the target, and Dan misses the target. John could miss the target and Dan could hit the target, or John could miss the target and Dan could miss the target. So we've got all our possible outcomes. We've got hit and hit, we've got hit and miss, we've got miss and hit, and finally we've got miss and miss. So there are all our possible outcomes of what could happen whenever John throws the ball at the target and Dan throws the ball at the target. So now what we're going to do is find the probability of each of these outcomes. So the probability of hit, 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 miss, miss, hit, and miss, miss. So let's start off with hit, hit. So if we follow our branches, we've got the probability that John hits is 0.6, and the probability that Dan hits is 0.7. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply along these branches because the AND rule means you multiply the probabilities. So we're going to do 0.6 multiplied by 0.7, and that will tell us the probability of a hit and a hit. So 0.6 multiplied by 0.7 would be equal to 0.42. So that means the probability of John hitting and Dan hitting is 0.42. So let's have a look at our next outcome, which is hit miss. So let's go along the branches. We've got hit, which is 0.6, and then we've got miss, which is 0.3. And we multiply along those branches to get the probability of that outcome. So we're going to do 0.6 multiplied by 0.3. So 0.6 multiplied by 0.3 is equal to 0.18. Next, we've got miss hit. So 0.4 for miss multiplied by 0.7 for hit. So 0.4 multiplied by 0.7 is equal to 0.28. And finally, the probability of a miss miss, well, that would be 0.4 multiplied by 0.3. So we've got 0.4 multiplied by 0.3 is equal to 0.12. So we find the probability of each one of those outcomes. Now what's also useful to note is that the probabilities will add together to be 1, because obviously if John throws a ball at the target and Dan throws a ball at the target, these are the only possible outcomes. Hit, 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 miss, miss, hit, and miss, miss. So therefore, if we add together 0.42 and 0.18, well that would be 0.6, plus 0.28 would be 0.88, plus 0.12 would be 1. And that's it. So those probabilities add together to be equal to 1. So let's have a look at some questions that we might be asked on our tree diagram. So first question says, so we've got the same question and tree diagram and probabilities and outcomes. And we've been asked, what is the probability that John and Dan both hit the target? So that is the probability of John hitting and Dan hitting, which is our hit hit, which would be 0.42. So the probability of John hitting the target and Dan hitting the target would be 0.42. And that's it. Let's have a look at our next question. So we've got the same question and the same tree diagram, and we've been asked, what is the probability that neither of them hit the target? So that would be John missing and Dan missing, which would be our miss miss, which is 0.12. So 0.12. So our next question says, what is the probability that exactly one man hits the target? So that could be John hitting the target and Dan missing, or it could be John missing and Dan hitting. So hit miss and miss hit would be our two suitable outcomes there. So these two outcomes. So we could either have a hit miss or we could have a miss hit. 
So in probability, the OR rule is that we add the probabilities together to find the probability of one happening or the other one happening. So if we add these two probabilities together, it will tell us the probability of one man hitting the target. So if we take our 0.18 and add 0.28, that would be equal to 0.46. So the probability of a hit miss or a miss hit would be 0.46. Okay, next question. Okay, so our next question says, what is the probability that at least one man hits the target? So we're looking for outcomes where at least one man hits the target. So if we start down here, miss, miss, well, neither man hits the target there, so that wouldn't be one of the outcomes that we're looking for. Our next outcome, that would be our miss hit, so John missing and Dan hitting. Well, one of the men has hit the target, so that would be a suitable outcome. Our next outcome is hit miss, so that was John hitting and Dan missing. So again, as you can see, one of them, John is hitting the target, so that would be at least one of them hitting the target. And finally, hit hit, well that's John hitting it and Dan hitting it, and that would mean that at least one of them has hit it, because two of them have hit it, so that means that that is another possible outcome. So we've got miss hit, hit miss, and hit hit. So these three probabilities, if we add them together, that will tell us the overall probability of at least one man hitting the target, because we could have miss hit, or we could have hit miss, or we could have hit hit. So if we take our 0.42 and we add 0.18 and we add 0.28, we will find the probability of at least one man hitting the target. So 0.42 plus 0.18 is 0.6, plus 0.28 will be equal to 0.88. And that's it. Okay, so let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, Chloe fires an arrow at a target, and the probability of it being windy is one fifth. The probability of Chloe hitting the target in windy weather is one quarter. And the probability of Chloe hitting the target when it's not windy is much greater, it's two thirds. And we've been asked to complete the tree diagram. So here we've got a probability question with two events. The first event, whether it's windy or not. And the second event, whether Chloe hits the target or not. Now in this question, we're dealing with fractions rather than decimals, but that's okay, it's the same approach. So let's start off by labeling our probabilities on the branches. So let's have a look at this pair of branches, are windy or not windy. So the probability of it being windy in the question is one fifth, it tells us that. So the probability of it not being windy, well we know these two probabilities have to add together to be equal to one, so that means the probability of it not being windy will have to be four fifths, because four fifths plus one fifth is equal to one. Okay, so that's the probabilities labelled for being windy or not windy. Now let's have a look at the probabilities for Chloe hitting the target. So we've got this pair of branches, and as you can see, we've got windy and then this pair of branches. So these are the probabilities of Chloe hitting the target on a windy day. So it says the probability of Chloe hitting the target in windy weather is one quarter. So the probability of her hitting the target in windy weather is equal to one quarter. And we need to find the probability of her missing the target in windy weather. So we know that these two probabilities will have to add together to be equal to one. So if the probability of her hitting the target is one quarter, that means the probability of her missing the target will have to be equal to three quarters. So let's have a look at our next pair of branches. So we've got hit and miss on a not windy day. So the probability Chloe hits the target on a not windy day is two thirds. So the chance of her hitting it on a not windy day is equal to two thirds. So if the probability of Chloe hitting the target is equal to two thirds, the probability of her missing it would be equal to one third. So we're asked to complete the tree diagram, so we've labelled the probabilities on the tree diagram, so that's that part done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So the next part of the question says, find the probability that Chloe hits the target. So let's look at our outcome. So it could be windy and she could hit, so windy hit. It could be windy and she misses, so windy miss. Then we've got not windy and hit, so not windy and hit. And then we've got not windy and miss, so not windy and miss. Okay, so let's find the probability of each of our outcomes. So let's start off with windy and hit. So the probability of it being windy and hitting, well, we would take our one fifth and we would multiply by one quarter. So we'll take our one fifth and we will multiply by one quarter. And to multiply fractions, you just multiply the numerators and the denominators together. So the numerators multiplied together, one times one is equal to one. And the denominators, five times four is equal to 20. So the probability of it being windy and Chloe hitting the target is one twentieth. Okay, let's find the probability of it being windy and Chloe missing. So it'll be windy and miss. So that'll be one fifth multiplied by three quarters. So one fifth multiplied by three quarters. And when we do that, we get one times three is equal to three, and five times four is equal to 20. So the probability of it being windy and Chloe missing is equal to three twentieths. Okay, let's have a look at our next outcome, which is not windy and Chloe hitting. So that would be four fifths for not windy multiplied by two thirds. So four fifths multiplied by two thirds. And when we do that, we get four times two is equal to eight, and five times three is equal to 15. So the probability of it being not windy and Chloe hitting the target is eight fifteenths. 
And finally, the probability of it being not windy and Chloe missing. So let's go along our branches. So we've got not windy, four fifths, multiplied by, and then we've got miss, and the probability of that's one third. So multiply by one third. And when we do that, we get four times one is equal to four, and five times three is equal to 15. So the probability of it being not windy and Chloe missing is equal to four fifteenths. Now we're asking the question to find the probability that Chloe hits the target. So that could be windy and hit, or it could be not windy and hit. So it's either this outcome or this outcome. So that means that because it's either that outcome or that outcome, we would add those two probabilities together. So if we add together 1 20th and 8 15ths, we'll find the probability of Chloe hitting the target. So 1 20th plus 8 15ths. So we need to find a common denominator for 20 and 15. Well, 60, 3 times 20 is 60, and 4 times 15 is 60, so we'll use 60. So 3 times 20 is 60, so 3 times 1 is 3. And 4 times 15 is equal to 60, so 4 times 8 is equal to 32. And if we add those two together, we get 35 over 60. And we can simplify that by dividing both of them by 5. So 35 divided by 5 is equal to 7, and 60 divided by 5 is equal to 12. So the answer is 7 twelfths, and that's it.